السبيل والتسليم والكوثر قاتل عمد ومرحب وأنت فاتح بدر وحنين وخيبر إمام المشرقين بايع البيعتين ساجد القبلة والد الحسنين إمام المشارق والمغارب مظهر العجائب والغرائب نقطة دائرة المطالب طالب أسد الله الغالب غالب على كل غالب مولانا علي بن أبي طالب صلوات الله وسلامه عليه الله ما صلي على محمد وعلى محمد بعد نستكتب مولانا نور الحسن حفظه الله brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته it is indeed a great honor and a joyous occasion today, an honor for me to be speaking on this occasion here in Babul Ilm. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our insignificant efforts in our expression of love towards the Ahlul Bayt alayhi wa salatu wa salam. It is indeed an honor for me talking about the personality whose birth we are celebrating is not a job for any ordinary human being to do. Um, they are, it is an honor and a privilege to even utter the word Ali from the mouth of someone who is a wretched slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before you. However, if we do not speak about this personality, we gain to lose from the teachings of Imam alayhi salam and the fada'i of Amin al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib sallallahu wa sallamu alayhi Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa alayhi Therefore allow me to extend felicitations and congratulations to each and every one of you on the occasion of the wiladat of Imam alayhi salatu wa salam Imam whose name is our identity. Imam, we are known as the Shia of Ali ibn Abi Talib. His name is our identity. The entire universe knows us as the lovers of Imam Ali salam and the followers of Imam Ali. A man just before passing away of the Holy Prophet was declared as a Mawla and the declaration of the Wilayat of Imam Ali alayhi salatu wasalam by the Holy Prophet of Islam brings a verse of the Quran that declares the perfection and the completion of the religion. Al-yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum al-islam deena. So the perfection of religion, the completion of religion comes by the announcement of the Wilayat as well as the leadership of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib sallallahu wa sallam wa alayhi wa sallam wa alayhi wa sallam just for the 
sake of refreshing our minds, born uh, on 13th of Rajab, 30 Amul Field, the year of the elephant, born inside Kaaba. So when we hear about it, it is something that someone speaks and we just listen to it. But when we think about this entire concept of being born inside Khane Kaaba, we have to look at this from a very different perspective of what it all means. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls this house, the Kaaba itself, in awwala baytin mudi'a lil nas lalladhi bi bakkata mubaraka wa huda lil alameen. Allah says, the first house that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in awwala baytin mudi'a lil nas that has been placed for the people lalladhi bi bakkata mubaraka. It is in Mecca itself, the blessed place, Mecca. It is there for the guidance of mankind. This is a very wonderful verse that gives us the idea of what it means to be born inside Khane Kaaba. So the house itself is the most sacred place on the earth. According to Quran, it says the first house that has been placed for the people is that which is in al bakka al mubaraka it is for or it is there for the guidance of the people. So no doubt guidance will, will, will eliminate, will bring you and I, or the guidance from Kaaba will emanate for us to be able to hear what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to say from this place. Allah calls it his house. It is Baytullah. It is the house where circumambulation takes place and shall take place until the day of judgment. It is a house that circumambulation was taking place prior to the birth of Amir al-Mu'mineen. It is the house that is a focal point for the entire Muslim Ummah and inshallah eventually the entire universe that will look at this house as a point of guidance from where guidance will come. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places this house for you and I to receive guidance from it. In this house is the birth of none other than Ali ibn Abi Talib salawatullahi wa salamu History, the words of history say, Lam yulad qablahu wa la ba'dahu mawludun fi baytillahi al no one before Ali, no one after Ali has ever been born in the house of Kaaba. This is exclusively the honor of Ali ibn Abi Talib sallallahu wa sallam And there are many riwayats with regard to the birth of Amir al-Mu'mineen, how it takes place. I will try to uh, make this as brief as possible before I go into the life of Amir al-Mu'mineen from where we can learn something and take home. The idea of celebrating the birth anniversary of any personality can either be very passive or it can be active. It can either be a ritual that we follow, a ritual that has been established by our elders, and the ritual that we follow, or it can be a productive ritual, understanding the meaning of why it was placed. Kushali, or celebrations or commemorations of any personality, when we come to the Masajid, or when we come to the Mahafil, or when we come to the Imam Bargah or Husseiniyah, is not the same as when we celebrate a birthday. Although nowadays we do that, we bring a birthday cake, we, we, we cut a cake in the name of Imam Zamana, in the name of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. No objection to that, it's fine. However, it's very different the idea of celebrating a wiladat or the idea of commemorating a shahadat is not the idea of coming to the mosque so that I can tick a box that I was there. The idea of it is for us to learn that this institution was established by whoever established it, that is not our, our uh, concern right now. Whoever placed this, whoever started this, of the attendance of the mosque, of the majalis, or the mahafil that are taking place, had something in mind. 
And the only thing that was in mind was to take the jewels from the lives of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salatu wasalam, learn through them, apply them into our life, and then come back the following year having applied it to celebrate what I have received from Imam alayhi salatu wasalam. It's not only just coming to the mosque, it is for us to come and celebrate the kushali of Imam. That celebration is not the birthday of the Imam, but it is my achievement from the life of Imam alayhi salam, or the lessons that I have taken from the life of Imam alayhi salam. And therefore that is what we will try to do inshaAllah ta'ala today in whatever time that I have. When you look at Ali ibn Abi Talib in Quran and Majid, you find that Amir al-Mu'mineen has not been mentioned explicitly in Quran. However, Imam Ali alayhi salam has been mentioned in the Quran through events that have taken place. Many have slept in, in the bed of someone. Many a brother have slept in the bed of his own brother for whatever reason. However, when Ali ibn Abi Talib sleeps on the bed of the Holy Prophet of Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sings the glory of Ali ibn Abi Talib. And when you look at history, we find that there is none other than Ali ibn Abi Talib who was able to achieve that particular status. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْرِي نَفْسَهُ اتِّغَاءَ مَرَّاتِ اللَّهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals a verse with regard to Amir al-Mu'mineen at the time when, the, when he sleeps in the bed of the Holy Prophet of Islam. And the verse is to do with the transaction of him giving his soul to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I will avoid translating this. When it comes to giving zakat, when it comes to giving alms, when it comes to understanding our social responsibilities, when it comes to purifying our own souls, we all do it. History has done it. But when Ali ibn Abi Talib does it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sings the glory of Ali ibn Abi Talib. When, it's, when a poor man walks inside the mosque, asks Amir al or asks the people and the attendees of the mosque for zakat, it is only one single individual while in the state of salat balancing his worship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his social responsibility with the people of the world, he gives his ring to this poor man. Look at the balance that Amir al-Mu'mineen is showing here. And due to that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sings the praise of Ali ibn Abi Talib by saying, إِنَّمَا وَلِيُّكُمُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَيُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةَ وَهُمْ رَاكِعُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sings the praises. And if you find who gave zakat in the state of ruku, you will see none other than Ali ibn Abi Talib sallallahu wa sallam. Wa Observe this with regard to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you come to the birth of Maryam alayhi salam, we find her in the niche, sitting there performing her ibadah. Zakaria used to come to Maryam. Nabi Zakaria he used to come to Maryam and he used to find fruits around her. When there was no one who could enter where Maryam was in this niche. So Quran says, كُلَّمَا دَخَلَ عَلَيْهَا زَكَرِيَ الْمِحْرَابِ Every time Zakaria entered that niche where Maryam was, wajada indaha rizqa. He found there was a risk when nobody had access to her. Zakaria said, Qala ya Maryam, anna laki hada. Where from? How do you get these fruits when there is no access whatsoever? She responds by saying, Qala huwa min indillah. This is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَرْزُقُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابُ Allah gives risk to whosoever he desires without any computation whatsoever of it. This is Maryam inside the mosque and in, within the mosque inside the niche. So a sacred place where no one has access. However, when she becomes pregnant, carrying Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, she is being asked to leave that place. She is being asked to vacate that sacred place. 
And when she becomes pregnant and heavily pregnant, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspires into her to leave this place. So she now leaves. The Quran says, وَذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ مَرْيَمْ إِذِنْ تَبَذَدْ مِنْ أَهْلِهَا مَكَانًا شَرْقِيًّا Remember the book of Maryam. When she retired in a remote place at the time of her pregnancy. However, when it comes to Ali ibn Abi, look at what the riwayat says. When it comes to Ali ibn Abi Talib, Fatima bint Asad is welcomed to the Kaaba. Kaaba is the most sacred of places. If we had time, I would have discussed with you the idea of Taharat and what Taharat actually means when it comes to the Ahlul Bayt Either it is a simplistic understanding of ours as to what is Najis and what is Park, or Taharat in the true sense of what Taharat actually means. It is something that we need to study and be able to understand. However, when it comes to Fatima bint Asad, she enters, she is welcomed into this house. The riwayat says she goes towards the door of Khane Kaaba. You have seen, uh, when you go to Mecca, you have seen people say, Allahu A'lam, people say that the sign or the crack that is there is apparent and that that crack, they are trying to hide it and, and, and it is not hiding. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows, but there is no doubt about history that Fatima bint Asad came towards Khane Kaaba. And she prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and she said, فَبِحَقِّ الَّذِي بَنَا هَذَا الْبَيْتِ For the sake of he who has built this particular house. وَالْمَوْلُودُ الَّذِي بِبَطْنِي And for the sake of he who is in my womb, open up for me. And history says, while Maryam had to leave, Fatima bint the Asad was welcomed inside Khane Kaaba so that she could deliver Ali ibn Abi Talib sallallahu wa sallam wa alayhi This is as far as the birth of Amir al-Mu'mineen is concerned. And we see this miraculous event taking place and there are many other riwayats. Is it possible to reduce the heating, please, uh, if possible. Sorry, unless you guys are cold. Look at the childhood of Amir al muminin and I want us to take this home and understand the personality of Imam Ali salam from this perspective. Look at the childhood, childhood of Imam Ali. You know, no matter how much we speak about Imam Ali, it is not possible to fulfill the fada'il of Imam Ali al -Islam. It is impossible. Oh, a poet in Urdu says, Safar tawil hai, rahe najat choti hai. It is a long journey and the means of salvation are very small. Safar tawil hai, rahe najat choti hai. Ali ka zikr bohat hai, hayat choti hai. There is too much to talk about Ali, our life cannot be able, the, the age that Allah has given us will not be able to fulfill the fadail of Imam Ali. Safar tabil hai, rahe najat choti hai. Ali ka zikr bohat hai, hayat choti hai. Ali ko kaise mein mawla hai kainat kahu? How can I say Ali is the mawla of the universe? How is it possible for me to even say that Ali is the leader and the mawla and the master of the universe? Ali ko kaise mein mawla hai kainat ko? Bada hai naam mein Ali kainat chodi hai. Ali! The name of Ali is bigger. The universe is smaller. Salawat ala wa Look at the childhood of Imam Ali and his childhood mentioned or described by himself, not anybody else. So we can see history. So we can see history, we can study history. History 
written by people, history mentioned by people, history of Imam Ali by Imam Ali Musalam, history of Imam Ali by the historians, whether they wrote raw history, whether it is analytical history, whatever kind of history it is. That is one aspect of it. But then Ali ibn Abi Talib speaks about himself with his own tongue. In Nahjul Balaba, Amir al speaks about himself and his childhood. And that in itself is a great fadila of Imam Ali alayhi salam. He says, he talks about his relationship with the Holy Prophet. He says what kind of a relationship he enjoyed with the Prophet. He says, وَلَقَدْ عَلِمْتُمْ مَوْضِعِي مِنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ بِالْقَرَابَةِ الْقَرِيبَةِ وَالْمَنْزِلَةِ الْخَصِيصَةِ in Nahjul Balagh, Amir al says, Do you know what was my relationship with the Holy Prophet due to my close association with him? Bil Qarabatil Qariba wal Manzilatil Khasisa. Then he says, Let me tell you what it is regarding me and the Holy Prophet in my childhood. Let me tell you how I spent my childhood. Wabaani fi hijri wa ana walad. Amir al Mu'minin says, I was a child when he used to carry me on his lap. He used to make me sit on his lap. This is in the words of Amir al-Mu'mini. وَضَعَنِي فِي حِجْرِهِ وَأَنَا وَلَدِ وَيَضُمُّنِي إِلَى صَدْرِهِ And the Holy Prophet used to hold me close to his chest. وَيَضُمُّنِي إِلَى صَدْرِهِ وَيَكْنُفْنِي فِي فِرَاشِهِ He used to keep me close to him by his bed. وَيُمِسُّنِي جَسَدَهُ وَيُشِمُّنِي عَرْقَهُ And he used to touch my body and he used to allow me to smell the fragrance of Nubuwa. This is my childhood, Amir al-Mu'ineen says. This is how I spent my childhood. That I used to sit very close to the Prophet. He used to carry me on his lap. He used to keep hold me on my by my chest and bring me close and hug me and embrace me. He used to make sure I was close to him. Then Amir al muminin goes forward and he says, The Prophet of Islam used when food used to come before him, he used to take a morsel of food and chew it first. And when it was chewed that's when he used to give it to me morsel by morsel in my mouth now remember the prophet is a masoom ali ibn abi talib is a masoom remember training is is is, is coming from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knowledge is coming from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala experience is coming from anybody who has been given the status of the imam it is our belief system that the ilm and experience and age and whatever it may be comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here the Holy Prophet is doing something. He does not require to purify Ali ibn Abi Talib. He does not require to give him a training if we see it in the context of isma, in the context of knowledge, in the context of him being a ma'soom. There is no training required because the training comes directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, here we see the Holy Prophet. His actions, the actions of the Holy Prophet are a hujjah for us when we look at the action of the Prophet. On one hand, it is Amir al-Mu'mineen, our first Imam, Abu al-A'imma. On the other hand, it is the Holy Prophet. And this is what is taking place. وَلَقَدْ كَانَ يَمْدَعُ الشَّيْءٍ He used to eat a food. He used to eat the food, a morsel. And then after chewing it, he used to give it to me in my mouth, morsel by morsel. Ya Rasulullah, what are you doing? What is happening? Suddenly you realize the result of this. Amir al muminin although this was not possible, but it is a lesson for you and I. Amir al muminin says, as the result of him feeding me, the result of him putting the morsel from his mouth into my mouth was فَمَا وَجَدَنِي كَذْبَةً فِي قَوْلِ وَلَا خَطْلَةً فِي فِعْلِ He never ever found a word of lie from my mouth, nor did he see a weakness in the character of Ali ibn Abi Talib.
which tells us Ali did not require this. However, it tells us how important it is what we eat. It tells us how important it is how we are raised. It tells us how important it is to make sure that the appropriate and adequate training is given to my child. This is Rasulullah doing whatever he is doing. This is Amirul Mu'mineen. So as I said, training may not have been required. But the Holy Prophet of Islam is making sure and painstakingly doing what he is doing. So the result of this was, فَمَا وَجَدَنِي كَذْبَةً فِي قَوْلِ وَلَا خَطْلَةً فِي فِعْلِ He did not, I, as a result of this, I did not utter a word of lie, nor there was any weakness in my character. Then Amir al-Mu'mineen carries on. He says, وَلَقَدْ كُنْتُ يَرْفَعُ لِي فِي كُلِّ يَوْمٍ مِنْ أَخْلَاقِهِ الْعَلَمَى Every single day. The only Prophet of Islam uh, used to display before me a new angle of akhlaq. فِي كُلِّ يَوْمٍ مِنْ أَخْلَاقِهِ الْعَلَمَى وَيَأْمُرُنِي بِالْإِقْتِدَاءِ بِالْإِقْتِدَاءِ and he used to command me to follow it. And then I mean, you know, say something so beautiful. Those who understand Arabic language will know what, why he is called, uh, why Nahjul Balagha is called Nahjul Balagha, why Amir al Mu'minin is called the master of eloquence. After this, Amir al Mu'minin says, وَلَقَدْ كُنْتُ أَتَّبِعُهُ إِتِّبَاعَ الْفَصِيلِ أَثَرَ أُمِّهِ And I used to follow the Holy Prophet of Islam just like a baby camel follows its mother everywhere. This is Ali ibn Abi Talib talking about his own life through his own tongue, in his own words, Najjul Bala. He says, وَلَقَدْ كُنْتُ أَتَّبِعُهُ إِتِّبَاعَ الْفَصِيلِ أَثَرَ أُمِّهِ I used to follow the Prophet just like a baby camel follows its mother everywhere. That's how I used to follow. يَرْفَعُنِي فِي كُلِّ يَوْمٍ مِنْ أَخْلَاقِهِ الْعَلَمَةِ وَيَأْمُرُنِي بِالْإِقْتِدَاءِ بِهِ And he used to command me to follow this new akhlaq. وَلَقَدْ قَرَنَ اللَّهُ بِهِ مِنْ لَدٌ أَنْ كَانَ فَطِيمًا أَعْظَمَ مَلَكٍ مِنْ مَلَائِكَتِهِ يَسْلُكُ بِهِ طَرِيقَ الْمَكَارِمِ Allah had appointed an angel who used to guide the Holy Prophet of Islam. A great angel. Day and night, this angel that was appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide him, he was guiding him and I used to follow him like a baby camel follows its mother everywhere. Then Amir al-Mu'mineen says, he says, لم يكن حينئذ بيت في الإسلام During those days, there was no houses belonging to Muslims. There was no Muslims. غير رسول الله It was either Rasulullah who was a Muslim وخديجه and Khadija وأنا ثالثهما and I was the third of them. This is Amir al-Mu'mineen himself. لم يكن بيت حينئذ في الأسلام غير رسول الله وخديجة وأنا ثالثهما. ولقد كان يجاورني بحراء. The Prophet used to take me to غار الحراء. Where Quran was revealed. Where the first five verses of Quran were revealed. The Holy Prophet used to take him, me with him in غار الحراء ولقد كان يجاورني بحراء أراه ولا يراه غيري I used to see him and other than me no one saw the prophet and then you know what he says أرى نور الوحي والرسالة وأشم ريح النبوة I used to smell the fragrance of Risala, I used to see the nur of Risala, of revelation, and I used to smell the fragrance of prophethood. This is Ali ibn Abi Talib as far as his childhood is concerned. When we look at him from this perspective, we realize that it was not just 
something that history has written. It is impossible to talk. If there was a psychologist or somebody who is a specialist in psychology was to profile Amir al-Mu'mineen, they would not be able to profile him. He lives beyond human comprehension, Amir al-Mu'mineen. Imam Khomeini says in one of his books, he says, was he a human being that the inhabitants of the earth spoke about him? Or, he, or was he an angelic being that the inhabitants of the heavens spoke about? He says, there is no one who can profile Amir al-Mu'mineen. No matter how you look at him, you see him as a unique personality and you will see it how this happens in history. So, uh, when it comes to his responsibility, then he, his adulthood, his leadership, the leadership of Amir al-Mu'mineen, his adulthood, you find that he has a multifaceted personality. He is not an ordinary individual. What makes him special, other than these miraculous things that are happening, is his concern about human beings, his concern about fellow creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his meticulous way of dealing with things. He lived amongst the people. He was sitting and talking to individuals. He may have been the king of kings. When he was the ruler of the time, he may have been the kings of kings. He may have had the biggest of the armies. He may have been the most powerful man on earth, no matter what it was. But somehow, this man who deserved to live in a palace, who had the greatest of the army, who had the best of the advisors around him, who had the greatest of the army and wealth and Baytul Mal in his hands, but only Allah knows what pleasure he used to derive in waking up in the middle of the night and delivering bags of flour in the houses of the people. Not only that, sitting with them, talking to them, having a discussion with them, eliminating their difficulties, removing their difficulties for them. You know Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein, after burying Amir al-Mu'mineen, they were returning back to Kufa go back to their house. You've heard this many times, but you normally hear it in Masatib. And, and that is why we probably don't pay much attention to it. We listen to this inside. Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein are returning back from Najaf, from Ghari, after burying Amir al As they return, they hear a cry, a sorrowful cry. Someone is weeping, someone is crying. From a dilapidated area, a house, they go near it, they find a man, blind, they find a man, disabled, sitting there, crying and weeping, Imam Hassan being the son of Amir al-Mu'mineen and Imam Hussain they go towards there, they forget their sorrow for a moment, they go there, they find this old man, sitting there, Imam Hassan comes close to him and says to him, oh man, why do you weep, why do you cry? He says, my muhsin has not shown up for three days. I have not seen this muhsin of mine. Who is your muhsin? I don't know. Do you know his name? I don't know. Any mark, anything about him that is special? Yes. What is it about him that is special? He used to sit next to me. He used to take a morsel of food. He used to put it in my mouth and then he used to say, Oh Allah, a miskin is sitting next to a miskin. This is what he used to do. Any other sign of this man? Yes. For some reason I feel the fragrance that you have is the same fragrance that this muhsin of mine had. But I know you are not him. Who was this man? Who was not exposing himself to the people of what he was doing for them. It was none other than Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib sallallahu wa sallam
people did recognize him. People <coughs> complained to the caliph, which is Amir al-Mu'mineen, of the time without realizing that he was a caliph. Can you imagine how he walked the streets? A woman makes a complaint to Amir al-Mu'mineen about Amir al-Mu'mineen without realizing this is Amir al-Mu'mineen. This is the life that Amir al-Mu'mineen led. That's why I say it's impossible to profile this individual, you know. I think it is Alama Iqbal, if not Iqbal, it is another poet who says, Jaha par khatm hoti hai hudud e akl insani where human intellect reaches its peak beyond which it cannot go any further. Jaha par khatm hoti hai hudud e akl e insani maha se murtaza ki shan ka aghaz hota hai. It is from there that Ali ibn Abi Talib starts his journey. So when you look at him, from that perspective, we realize Amir al-Mu'mineen, as far as his life and his social responsibilities were concerned, he fulfilled it in a manner that no one has ever, have ever been able to fulfill it as a leader. Amir al-Mu'mineen. He was a caliph of an expansive empire, Amir al-Mu'mineen. And he was a leader for the people, lived amongst the people, and was a leader for the people. When it came to social justice, or if you want to see the political structure created by Amir al-Mu'mineen, you can read the letter to Maliki Ashtar. And this letter is one of the most celebrated letters, but that will show you the mindset of Amir al Mu'minin 1400 years ago, laying down a structure of leadership of how to lead. This is another matter that people talk about this letter, but nobody does anything about it. Amir al Mu'minin is the author of this particular letter that he wrote to Maliki Ashta. There is a letter, you know about the letter to Maliki Ashta. There is another letter that Amir al-Mu'mineen writes to Uthman ibn Hunayf al-Ansari. And what he is expecting from the people, these are takeaway lessons for you and I. He writes a letter to Uthman ibn Hunayf and he says to him uh, and appoints him as the, as the, um, the, uh, he's appointed individual in Basra. He writes a letter to him and he says, wa ala, wa inna li kulli imama. For every uh, follower, there is a leader whom he follows. Yaqtadi bihi whom he follows. Wa yastadi'u bi nuri ilmi. Then he says, ala wa inna imamakum. So Uthman ibn Hunayf, when he became the appointed individual for Basra, by the command of Amir al-Mu'mineen, he enjoyed his position. He used to be invited in the houses and the palaces of the people. He used to be offered the best type of foods, biryanis of today and kichras of today, and the best of the foods he used to be there displayed before him. Uh, many types of food, and drinks just because he was enjoying the authority that was given to him by Imam Ali When Imam Ali heard about it, he writes a letter to him and he says, he says to him, remember, remember that as far as your Imam is concerned, he has made it enough for him to survive with two morsels of food. Two loaves of food, of his meal. Two loaves is more than enough for Amir al-Mu'mineen. And he says, innakum, no. From the clothes, just two pieces of clothes, shabby clothes is enough for your Imam. And two morsels of food is enough for your Imam. And he says, Walakin, look at Amir al Mu'minin. He says, Walakin, I know, I understand that you will not be able to do what I, Ali ibn Abi Talib, does. Allah wa inna imamakum khadiktafa min dunya bi tumrayhu min tu'mihi bi qursayhu. 
أَلَا وَإِنَّكُمْ لَا تَقْدِرُونَ عَلَى ذَلِكُ You are not going to be able to do what I am doing. ولكن, but I have a request. ولكن أعينوني بورع واجتهاد. I want you to help me create a culture of chastity and justice amongst people. This is a little more meaning, right? What is it that he lacked? It is when it comes to social justice or any kind of justice for that matter. When you look at Imam Ali alayhi salam, he says uh, to people, he says, if everything from the seven heavens and the earth were offered to Ali ibn Abi Talib, in return for him to, to take a husk of a grain from the mouth of an ant, Ali ibn Abi Talib will not do that injustice. If everything of the seven heavens and the earth were given to Ali so that he can snatch away a husk of grain from the mouth of an ant, Ali will not do that. He was a, an individual who cannot be profiled. Uh, let me end with these four lines for you. Something that the poet has put so beautifully. He says, Ye aur baat hai, wo boria nashin tha magar. He said, it is another matter that this man used to sit on a naked floor in a piece on a piece of shabby cloth it's another matter he says ye aur baat hai wo boria nashin tha magar hamesha zer e qadam takht o taj rakhta tha but he was the king of kings and to him that kingdom was equal to the dust under his feet he says ye aur baat hai wo boria nashin tha magar وہ اپنے زیر قدم تخت و تاج رکھتا تھا عجیب شخص تھا فاقوں میں جی رہا تھا مگر What a wonderful man he was He used to sleep hungry He was in a stage of hunger He, could hardly, he was hardly eating عجیب شخص تھا فاقوں میں جی رہا تھا مگر وہ اپنی مٹھی میں سب کا اناج رکھتا تھا while he was the one who was distributing to everyone, yet he remained hungry himself. When it comes to Amir al-Mu'mineen, it is impossible to uh, profile him. It is impossible for us to speak about him. All we can do is learn from the lives of Amir al-Mu'mineen, apply it into our life, come back the following year, or during the wafat, or the next year, the end of Rajab, having applied something from his life into my life so that I may come and celebrate the Kushali of Amirul Mu'mineen alayhi salam. On this occasion of the Bilal of Imam alayhi salatu wa salam, purify the atmosphere um, and uh, give fragrance to your chest and to your lips by reciting three loud salawats in the name of Ali ibn Abi Talib salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this blessed occasion of the Wilad of Amir Rukmi alayhi salam to forgive us our sins we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the opportunity to go for hajj and ziyarat. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the reappearance of the 12th Imam alayhi salam. And upon his reappearance to make us from amongst his ansar and his a'wan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for protection against the virus that is there in the world and for the shafa of all those who are affected by it. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the final moments of our lives to keep shaitan away from us and the influences of shaitan away from us that we die in love of Muhammad and Adam. Muhammad alayhi wa salatu wa salam. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa alayhi wa salam.